All right, class, can we start now? Yes. All right, uh, so today uh, we're going to look at um, a new topic, uh, which is chapter number five, dimensionality reduction. All right, uh, before that, uh, last class, we look at chapter number four, which is um, classification. Uh, basically, we look into naive bayes and and linear discriminant analysis, right? So naive bayes and linear discriminant analysis is actually uh, supervised learning techniques, right? Where we have uh, data and the observed value, we want to do a prediction and we want to do a classification. But in dimensionality reduction method, we look into a not unsupervised learning uh, method, right? So the, the look at is a singular value decomposition and principal component analysis. So before that, let's look at the difference between supervised and unsupervised uh, learning. Supervised learning means you have a set of key features, uh, which is x1 until xn, xt. Uh, this is the all independent variable measure on n observation. And the goal is to predict y using uh, the independent variable. So we are looking into the probability of y given x. Right? But in unsupervised learning, we have a set of p, uh, p features, uh, all the independent variable, uh, measure on n observation. But we do not have y value, y variable. So we are not interested in prediction because we don't have any associate response variable y. So this is unsupervised learning, right? Uh, so since we don't going to do a prediction, we would like to do some right dimensionality reduction, and we want to identify the correlation between the independent variables and and so on, right? So now. The unsupervised learning is a machine learning technique in which models are not supervised using training data set. Uh, you don't have the label to classify uh, the data in which uh, category. Right? So instead, a model can find the hidden pattern and insight from the given data. So this is the, <coughs> the objective or goal in unsupervised learning. So the as general, uh, the goal for unsupervised learning is to understand the structure of the data, and we also want to reduce the number of features representing the data. So let's say we have uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. So we want to reduce these five independent variables into certain uh, category and for example x1 until x3 become component number one x4 and x5 become component number two so we want to reduce from five independent variable to two components only right so this is the objective that we want to look into unsupervised learning dimensionality reduction so this is example of uh, techniques available in dimensionality uh, reduction techniques. So we have feature selection and dimensional reduction techniques. So in this topic, we are looking into principal component analysis and singular value decomposition. So singular value decomposition will be applied in in a principal component analysis. <clears throat> so what is dimensional reduction? Dimensional reduction is to reduce or compress dimensionality of the data. As I as per our example just now, we have five uh, independent variable. We want to reduce it into two component, two variable only, right? So by looking on the correlation between the independent variable. So let's say we have a large number of row, one million rows on Indian observation, and large number of column. So this is going to be a high dimensional data. Right, so we want to compact the data and produce fewer dimensions. So then we can do a, a interpretation, easier for interpretation, or we can 
save the storage for image or and you can do a visualization right for example if you have x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 if you want to do a visualization to represent the correlation between the independent variables so we can do x1 and x2 x1 and x3 x1 and x4 x1 and x5 and so on so by not reducing uh, by uh, by using the original data we could have many um, graph to visualize sometimes will really not be meaningful so instead of doing graph uh, many graph so we are going to reduce or group this variable into some components and then we can do a graphing a visualization of the data right so basically in data dimensional uh, dimensional reduction the the number of rows will remain and we want to shrink the number of columns right so then the remain uh, and then uh, but uh, we still remain the information in the data set lah. Right. Uh, so the information will be uh, remain now let's look at this data set so we have a customer and they right so if you look at this data set we have five uh column right wednesday thursday friday and sunday so if you look at the first four observation ahbu ahmad ali ayub they all prefer to come right uh on weekdays right so for badrol uh and uh, the last three observation badrol batri badrini so they all prefer to come on weekend Right, so by looking at this data, right, instead of having five uh, column representing five days, we can reduce it to two dimensions, right, uh, where the first dimension represent weekdays, right, and the second dimension represent weekend, right. So this is the the important of uh, the reason why we need to do a data dimensional. Uh, rather reduction because uh, it's easier to interpret right so why we reduce dimension i think i already explained this now we want to discover high uh, hidden correlation right remove some uh, redundant uh, information and easier to interpret or visualize and easier storage for for image data right <clears throat> so dimensionality reduction method there are a lot of dimensionality reduction method available but in this topic we are looking into singular value decomposition and principal component analysis right <clears throat> so let's look at the first one which is singular value decomposition but before that uh, do you have any questions so far any question to ask Any question? I tak dengar lah. Ada ada cakap ke? No. Right. Uh, now let look at the first uh, method, which is uh, singular value decomposition. So what is singular value decomposition? Is provide a way to factorize a matrix into a singular vector and singular values. Right. So basically, it reduces the rank of original matrix of features to the smaller rank of uh, matrix, so that the original matrix can be recreate using a linear combination. So this is the linear combination: A equals to U multiplied with B multiplied with V transpose. Right. So U means the left singular matrix. B is a singular value. Sometimes B will be present as sigma or s right b is a right singular vector right <clears throat> so this is the explanation of the equation right so we're going to use the composition matrix right uh, to determine how many dimensions to be removed uh, or how many dimensions to be retained right so we are uh, 
a singular value decomposition is a widely used technique to decompose metric to several component metric exposing of the useful of an interesting properties of the met uh, original metric. The U metric is a less singular metric consists of a square metric M multiplied with M and this is a diagonal metric so it only consists of diagonal value a right, singular diagonal value right, uh, and then the last uh, metric is uh, the right singular metric which is consists of n multiplied with n uh, matrix so v, uh, v transpose will represent the column of uh, dimension uh, column of original matrix a and u matrix as the last singular matrix will represent each observation of the singular matrix right the, the, uh, sorry, the, the left singular matrix uh, will present the observation of original matrix a right i didn't check out there. okay so this is the general overview of the metric right uh, so but originally we're going to have a full uh, metric decomposition u f and b then uh, once you already construct this one we will base on the singular matrix to reduce to choose how many component to re retain in the matrix so we will be based on the singular matrix to to sort off or to retain uh, some component in the data set and we will calculate the new uh, matrix A after dimensionality reduction, right? So this is the graph for singular values, component one and component two. In this case, singular value number one, singular vector one and singular vector two. Singular vector one is sigma one. It's measure how much the data variance is explained by the first singular vector. Right, and the singular vector 2 uh, is how much the data variance is explained as by the second singular vector. And singular vector 1 usually explain the largest value of the variance. And singular vector 2 will explain the second most largest uh, variance explained of the data. Right. So why we need uh, singular value decomposition? Of course, we want to do a dimensionality reduction, noise reduction, right? a metric approximation, feature extraction, eigenvalue, and again vector computation. Right. So let's look at this example. We have example users to movie. Right. Uh, so in this data set, I if, uh, this is metric A, this is U, this is sigma, and this is B transpose. Right. I already. Uh, decompose for you. So metric A consists of uh, seven observation. So this is four first observation and three last observation. If you look at the four first observation, right, uh, maybe the first person uh, don't like metric, don't like uh, alien, and don't like Serenity uh, movie. So this is a column by uh, it's representing movies. Right, so this uh, and then uh, first person did not respond to Casablanca and Emily movie. So it means that uh, first person maybe like sci-fi concept, and the third last uh, last three person maybe would like the romance concept uh, concept movie only. Right, so if you compose uh, this uh, into left singular. A diagonal metric and right singular metric right so you will get uh, this kind of uh, metric composition so to know how many uh, component or metrics to how many components to retain right? how many dimension to reduce or how many dimension to retain in the metric a it will depend on the singular a uh, diagonal matrix sigma right so this is 12.4, uh, sorry, the singular uh, value will be arranged from the small, the largest value to the smallest value. 
So this one will represent first component. This one will represent second component and third component, right? So we let's look at the first value of diagonal, 12.4. 12.4 divide by the total of all singular value, right? This one, 13.3. This one should be equal to, I think, 54. 12.4 divided by uh, 9.5 plus 1.3. So this one should be 53.445 lah, 45%. Right. So the first component will explain 53.45% of the variance in the data set. Right. The second component it is 9.5 divided by 12.4 plus 9.5 plus 1.3. It will represent how much? Eh? 9.5 to be 40.95% of the total variance. Right? Where the last one will be the last one. Eh? So, how many variants, how many components to retain? It should be the total of at least 80%. At least 80% or 90% lah, sorry. 90%. So if you combine these two components, it will uh, accumulate to 90 point, uh, 93.45 uh, uh, plus uh, 40.95. So it should be 94. Uh, this one 94.4%. <laughs> So if you take everything, it will consider 100% lah. So that is uh, the, the, the point of dimensional reduction. We want to remove uh, the, the less uh, variant explained in the, from the data set. So we want to sell at least 90% of the variant explained to the data set. So in this case, we look at the diagon uh, diagonal matrix. We will select only dimension number one and dimension number two, right? So now, right, so in this case, we will remove dimension number three and the last row of uh, V transpose. And this one also remove, right? So we will retain dimension one and dimension two. So if you look at this value, 0 0.56, 0 0.59, 0 0.56, this one represent first three column right first three column lah. right for this one we represent the observation right first five uh, first four rows and this is four uh, three last rows okay so since we already removed the the third uh, the third column and the third row the third uh, dimension we will focus on the first two uh, column Right, and first two rows. So we will look at the largest value for each row uh, for metric U. So this one 0 0.13 is larger than 0 0.12. So this value will represent one group. Right? The larger value will represent one group. The larger value on the bottom will represent the one group. Right. So this group will be classified as uh, sci-fi concept and the second column will represent a Roman concept, right? So if you reduce the, the last column and the last row for U and V transpose, right? Uh, so then you, will you can recalculate back the value to get the, the re reconstruct A metric, right? So if you look at this one, where this is the reconstruct after CVD, so all the value that not uh, important will be forced to zero, right? Will be forced to zero. So then you can see we have two dimension instead of five independent variable, right? So first dimension will be classified as sci-fi concept and the third, second dimension will be classified as Roman concept, okay? So this is in, uh, some example of SVD.
application we can use uh, image uh, reconstruction or image uh, compression uh, to save uh, storage also for easier uh, analysis right so this is the original image and this is the you can see yeah this is <coughs> we omitting 50 singular value Right. And this is we, when we put, uh, omit five singular value, so the image will be more clearer. If we omit 50 uh, singular value, the image will be uh, blurry. Right. So now, to develop singular value decomposition step by step, first thing, we need to compute the metric A transpose and A. And then we calculate A transpose multiply with A. And we next, after completing A transpose A, we need to find the eigenvalue by using this formula, determinant of A minus lambda x multiply. The U matrix and V transpose matrix. Uh, so to get the V transpose matrix, so we need to use A V multiply with A, A V equal to lambda V based on respective eigenvalue for uh, getting from step number two, right? And then uh, we will calculate the sigma uh, or diagonal matrix based on the, the lambda value that we got earlier. And then we going we can cut, uh, validate whether the value calculated correct or not by computing uh, the full CVD uh, using this equation. Okay. So so far, do you have any question before we start? Uh, we trying to compute the the example. Any question so far regarding? Uh, singular value decomposition. Ada soalan? Hello? No, sir. Right. So, now, <coughs> before we start, uh, this is the step uh, to calculate the co uh, singular value decomposition. Right, uh, but I'm not going to go through one by one for this one. We will look into our first example. But before we proceed with the example, let's look at some theorem that we need to take note. Right. So let's look at the first theorem. Theorem number one. Right. So if A is an M multiply with N matrix. So then, number one, A transpose A is orthogonal matrix. So A Transpose A is orthogonal diagonalizable, and number two, <coughs> the eigenvalue of A transpose A should be non negative. Right, so this is theorem number one. Let's look at theorem number two. So if a is an M multiply with N matrix, then A can be expressed as So A equal to, this is the equation of singular value decomposition at V transpose. Right, it is saja. So now, let's look at, uh, this one done, right? 
So you can copy or screenshot the theorem. <coughs> okay, done. Right, now let's look at example number one. So this is how uh, we compute the singular value decomposition uh, of metric A. Right, so example number one, we want to find a singular value decomposition of the metric A. So A is two by two metric, right? So first step, uh, from the theorem, we know that um, we know that A can be decomposed to left singular matrix multiplied with the diagonal uh, singular matrix multiplied with V transpose right singular matrix. So first step, step number one, step one. Step one, we need to find A transpose, right? So our A is equal to one, seven, one, seven, right? So A transpose will be one, one, seven, seven, right? Okay, so that is the first step. Second step, step number two, we need to find A multiply with A transpose and A transpose A, right? So this one will be used to calculate U, the left singular metric. This one will be used to calculate B transpose, right? So A, A transpose is equal to 1, 7, 1, 7 multiply with uh, one one seven seven. So this one should be equal to two fourteen fourteen ninety eight. Right. The second one a transpose a. So one one seven seven multiply with one. Seven one seven, so this one should be equal to fifty 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 fifty. Okay, <coughs> this is the second step. Now let's look at step number number three. Step number three, we want to find the value of left singular matrix. Left singular vector u. Okay. So we're going to use a multiply with a transpose, right? And using the formula a multiply a transpose minus lambda i. Uh, i is the identity metric. So <coughs> a a transpose minus lambda. I. So lambda i is uh, identity metric. So this one should be 2, 14, 14, 98. So this is the A transpose, A, A transpose minus lambda multiply with identity metric. Right. So equal to 0. So this one should be equal to uh, 2 minus lambda. 14, 14, 98 minus lambda, right? Equal to zero, right? So in our step, right? Step um, uh, number number what number two, we need to find the determinant of this metric, and we need to find the square root of eigenvalue to represent the singular value of a. Okay. So next, we need to find. Single uh, determinant of a 
A transpose minus lambda I. Right? So it should be equal to zero. So this is the matrix that we got. Right? So we need to find the determinant of 2 minus lambda 14. 14 98 minus lambda. Right. So remember the rule of uh, a determinant is let's say A B C B should be equal to A B minus B C. Okay. So this is how we find determinant. So this one should be 2 minus lambda multiplied with 98 minus lambda. Uh, minus 14 multiplied with 14 equal to 0. <coughs> so in this case, we, we got lambda square minus 100 lambda plus uh, 196 minus 196 equal to 0. So then we will get lambda square minus 100 lambda equal to 0. And we can simplify this one lambda lambda minus 100 to 0 so then we from here we have two lambda lambda number one equal to zero lambda number two equal to 100 okay so far do you have any question any question to ask you're not yet finished that's all Hello. Saya tak dengar ada yang cakap ke? No sir. Uh, it's okay. Alright. So step number four, let's find uh, the first eigenvalue. eigenvector uh, corresponding to lambda 1 equal to 0 uh, the first lambda that we are looking then after that we will look into the second lambda so uh, in this case we will use uh, the step number step number step number 4 we will calculate the V, uh, v, uh, v matrix a v equal to lambda v so in this case we are looking into u matrix a a transpose multiply with uh, v equal to lambda 1 v right so since uh, this matrix is 2 by 2 right 2 by 2 uh, is 2 14 14 98 so the v value should be equal to x and y, right? Two, two multiply, uh, two by one. So this one should be zero. Lambda one equal to zero, and matrix v is x, y, this one, right? So then we try to simplify the equation, right? Uh, right. So this one should be two x plus 14y and this is 14y and uh, 14x plus 98y right to be equal to zero so then we need to solve this right so if let's look at the first one 2x plus 14y equal to zero we can remove the two in front of x this is going to be 7y equal to zero so when y equal to 1, x will be equal to negative 7. So then our x and y here will be represent negative 7 and 1. So right. So then what we need to do in this step, we need to find, find the distance. distance uh, using Euclidean distance so, so x square plus y square so negative x square 
negative 7 square plus 1 square. Let's take the square root. So this one should be equal to square root of 5. Uh, 5, 0. Right. So this one should be 7.07. 7. So then we can conclude our first eigenvector. Right. Our first eigenvector is set negative 7, 1. So this one should be. So then our first eigenvector will be uh, negative 7 divided by square root of 50, which is 1 divided by square root of 50. Right? So we take, uh, we just divide the, uh, the value of eigen, eigenvalue with the, uh, the distance. So this one should be equal to negative 0 0.99 and 0 0.14, right? So this is the first eigenvector. Uh, we have two eigenvector in uh, to calculate v, uh, in u, which is mu uh, lambda equal to 100. So we repeat the same step for lambda equal to 100. Okay. So now. So to find the second eigenvalue, right, lambda equal to 100. So step, the same step, we, we just repeat it, right. So A, A transpose multiply with V equal to lambda 2 uh, V, right. So since this is a 2 by 2 metric, so the V value should be 2 by 1 matrix. Lah. So 2, 14, 14, 98 multiply with x, y equal to 100 x, y. Right. So this one I need you to calculate for me. I already simplified it. Uh, later on you can calculate by yourself. Lah. 2x plus 14y and 14x plus 98y this is equal to 100x 100y right so this one uh, later on you calculate by yourself this one should be negative 98x plus 14y and this is 14x minus 2y this is equal to zero right uh, so let's look at the first one. Uh, for 90, negative 98x plus 14y equal to 0. When x equal to 1, y should be equal to 98 over 14, which is equal to 7. So then we get xy equal to a 1 and 7. Lah. So not yet finished. We need to find the distance uh, distance of two eigenvalue. So this one x, uh, x square plus uh, y square and take the square root. This one should be square root of um, again the same thing 50. Right. So, so this one the second eigenvalue, eigenvector right, uh, is equal to 1 over square root of 50, 7 over square root of 50. So this one should be 0 0.14 and 0 0.99. So we already have two eigenvector. So next, we want to write down our left singular matrix <coughs> so step number six this is uh, step number six yeah? this is now step number four uh, this is step number five lah. we need to find the uh, step number six we need to write 
left singular matrix from calculated eigenvector. Right. So, uh, to write down the first eigenvector, uh, the first eigenvector we have um, negative 0 0.99 and 0 0.14. This is for lambda equal to 0. The second eigenvector we have 0 0.14, 0 0.99 right, for lambda 2 equal to 100. Right. So then we need to sort uh, the that we're going to combine, but we, uh, before we combine, we need to sort uh, with the largest one first, and then the smallest one will be based uh, sec, uh, on the on the uh, on the second part lah. So based on the calculated again value, right? So this one should be u equal to uh, the first one is the largest, 0 0.14 and 0 0.99. The second part is 0 0.99 and negative 0 0.99 and 0 0.14. So this is the U matrix that we already calculated. Right, the first one represents lambda equal to 100 and the second one represents lambda equal to 0. Right. So we already solved the first part which is uh, U. Right. So remember, A can be decomposed as U sigma V transpose. So we already done this one. We want to calculate this one and this one. Okay. So same process, right? We just repeat the same process for to to find the right, right angular value. Step number. Uh, step number seven. Okay? Step number seven. We need to find the right singular vector, which is V transpose. So just now we use uh, A, A transpose for finding U. Now in V transpose, we're going to use A transpose A. Right? So A transpose A. Right, we already calculated just now is uh, 50, 50, all 50, yeah? right? So now, first step, we need to find the determinant of A transpose A minus lambda I. So we just repeat the same process, right? But different matrix, lah. okay? So this one should be, oops. So later on, you calculate by yourself, huh? I just give you the answer. So this one is uh, 50 minus uh, lambda 0, 0 lambda. Right. Uh, you take your determinant equal to 0. So this one should be determinant of 50 minus lambda. Uh, this is just 50. 50, 50 minus lambda, right, to be equal to 0. So then uh, 50, my, the determinant is 50 minus lambda, multiply with 50 minus lambda, minus 50 multiply with 50 equal to 0. So again, uh, when you solve the, uh, the equation, you will get lambda minus 100, lambda equal to 0. So again, we have lambda 1, right? lambda 1 equal to 0, and lambda 2 equal to 100. Right? So we got the same lambda. Okay, so that is the first uh, second, uh, step number 7. So we try to first uh, find first eigen vector for lambda 1 equal to 0, right? So by using A transpose A multiply with V equal to lambda multiply with V. So we know that the 
the matrix A transpose A is a 2 by 2. This one will be 2 by 1. Lah. So this one, 50, 50, 50, 50. Multiply with X and Y, which is 0. Right? So the equation will be 50X plus 50Y. 50x plus 50y right equal to zero okay so when x equal to one y will be equal to negative one so we will get x and y equal to one and negative one so this is then we need to find the distance Distance should be equal to y x square plus y square, right? And this one should be equal to uh, square root of 2. So then x and y will be equal to 1 over square root of 2, negative 1 over square root of 2. So this is equal to, how much uh, is equal to? Okay. 0 0.70 negative 0 0.70 right so this is for the first eigenvector right. for the second eigenvector for lambda equal to 100 this is lambda number two it's the same process we just uh, repeat the same process 50 Right, and this is x and y, and this is 100 x, 100 y. Right. <coughs> okay, so if you're not clear, maybe I, I this is x, y. Okay, uh, then more clearer. Lah. So this one you can simplify the equation, right? Uh, maybe it become uh, negative fifty x plus fifty y. This is fifty x minus fifty y. So you do some computation, you will get like this, huh? right? So now when x equal to 1, y will also equal to 1. So then x and y equal to 1 and 1. Right? So the distance will be equal to 1 x, x square plus y square. So this one should be same as previous square root of 2. So the second eigenvector will be equal to 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, right? So this one should be 0 0.70 and 0 0.70. Now we already have the second eigenvector. So we need to write down the value of uh, V's, V transpose. Right, so V transpose will be equal to. So we need to sort based on the largest value first. So this one should be 0 0.70, 0 0.70, negative 0. Sorry, uh, the first one is 0 0.70 and negative. Right, 0 0.70, this one, eh? and negative 0 0.70. So this is our second. Uh, singular vector which is the right singular vector uh, we, we we sort this value based on the largest value first and the second value, uh, smallest value second right so we already have the u matrix and uh, v transpose matrix so we need to find uh, sigma so this is step number what uh, step number eight so step eight. So find the sigma value, which is the diagonal matrix. 
right? So diagonal matrix means that all elements are equal to zero except the diagonal element, right? So we have lambda one equal to zero and lambda two equal to one hundred. So we can sort from the largest to the smallest. We take the square root of the lambda and we sort the value. This is the square root of 100. Uh, this is going to be 0, 0, and square root of 0. This is 0 because the lambda 1 equal to 0. This is 100 because lambda 2 equal to 100. We need to sort. For the first one is the largest, second one is the smallest, right? So then we will get 10, 0, 0, 0, right? So this is uh, our lambda, uh, sigma, which is the diagonal matrix. So then we can put it into the formula, right? So u will be 0 0.14, negative 0 0.99, this is 0 0.99 and 0 0.14. This is metric U. And metric uh, diagonal is 0, 10, 0, 0, 0. Right. And the last metric V transpose is 0 0.70, negative 0 0.70. So all 0 0.7. Eh? Right. This is also 0 0.70. Right. Is it? Oh, so this one should be negative down here. Okay, so if you look at this uh, equation, we know that the first diagonal consists of 100% of the variance explained, right? Because the second one uh, contains zero, means that we only have one dimension, right? From the Two by two matrix, we can reduce it to one dimension matrix. Okay. <coughs> All right. So this suggests that dimension can be reduced to uh, one dimension uh, since uh, the sigma only has one largest uh, lambda. And this one dimension consists of 100% of the variance explained because, because you only have one variable, one, one, one number. Okay. Right. So, do you have any questions so far regarding how to calculate the CVD of metric A? Any question? So, if you don't have any question, then uh, example number two is for you to do it by yourself and. This is uh, example number three. Uh, I think you can do it by yourself. Right? So example number two, you need, uh, number two, you need to know how to find the terminal for three by three matrix. Lah. Okay. Uh, that's all for singular value decomposition. And then uh, uh, before we uh, continue to principal component analysis, do you have any questions so far? Any question? Any question? Hello? Do you have any questions so far? No, sir. Right. Uh, let me take five minute rest before we continue with com principal component analysis. Okay, yeah. we take five minute rest uh, before principal component analysis.
<coughs> Alright class, can we continue? Alright, uh, so principal component analysis. This one going to be very short lecture. Right, so principal component analysis is actually a, still under dimensionality reduction method. Lah. So it serves the uh, same purpose as uh, singular value decomposition. So it reduces number of variable that can that are correlated to each other into a fewer independent variable without losing any essence of the variable. Right. As I said just now, let's say we have the previous uh first uh earlier again I already mentioned x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. Let's say we have five variables. So what uh, singular value decomposition and principal component did, uh, principal component analysis did, we, they try to find the variable that have a high correlation and group it together. So this one is going to be PC1 and another group will be PC2, right, PC2, component number two. And within, within the, PC1, the component number one, all these three variables has high correlation, right? But with between between the PC1 and PC2, there are no correlation at all. So this is what uh, PCA and uh, singular value decomposition trying to do. Lah. So it provides an overview of linear relationship between input variable and input at the variables. <clears throat> so basically again what is a uh, PCA? PCA is a statistical procedure that convert a set of observation possibly correlated variable into a value uh, of linearly uncorrelated variable is called as principal component. So this area this is what we call as principal component number one which is uh, contribute to the largest uh, variance explained in the data and this is the second principal component which is the second larger uh, variance in, uh, in the data set right so so pc1 will be capture the most variance uh, variation the second most variation in pc2 and so on lah, if you have many pcs right so why PCA? Uh, suppose we want to visualize an observation and P features. So to do this, we can use scatter plot to do visualization, but we need to produce many scatter plot. This one I think I mentioned uh, earlier, okay? So we have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So if we want to do uh, to see the relationship between the variable, we can do a lot of uh scatter diagram x1 and x2 x1 and x3 and so on so <coughs> if p too large then it will not possible to look all of the uh scatter diagram uh, so the better method is to re uh, is required to visualize an observation and when p is large is we will like we will like to find the low dimensional that represent the data uh, and capture much as much as all the information as possible so this is what we want to do in principal component analysis. Uh, basically, principal component analysis is same object has the same objective as in uh, singular value decomposition, right? But uh, PCA is more uh, versatile technique, lah. Huh? Means uh, it, uh, it simplified uh, the result into a readable manner. So, PCA is a uh, popular technique for analyzing large data set containing high number or dimension, uh, increasing the interpretability of the data, right, while preserving maximum amount of information, right. So this is the 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 reason why we use PCA. Right. So what is the difference between PCA and SVD? 
So PTA and FPD are two eigenvalues method used to reduce high dimensional data into low dimensional data. Right? But PSVD gives you the whole nine yard of diagonalizing metric with two special metrics. But in PCA, it will skip the less significant component and we will conclude the only the significant component in the data set. Right. So that's why uh, most of the people will prefer to use uh, PCA over SVD, even though we know that SVD will be the part of calculation in PCA. So when to use PCA? When we want to uh, ensure variable in the data are independent variable, and when we want to reduce the number of variable, and we want we, when we want to interpret data and variable selection of it. Right. So there are several assumptions that need to need to give some attention. So <clears throat> before we proceed with the uh, principal component analysis, the first assumption is uh, independent variable to be highly correlated to each other, right? So the correlation coefficient tell us the strength of the direction of the linear relationship of the variable. So the variable include a uh, metric level or nominal level. Features are low dimensional in the uh, nature and the independent variable to be numeric. Uh, this is uh, important uh, assumption that needs to note. Okay, <clears throat> so how to construct principal component analysis? First step, we need to scale or normalize the data. Right? So why we need to normalize the data or scale the data? Because if your data is measured in different units, uh, let's say variable number one measure in kilogram, variable number two measure in uh, kilometer, for example. Eh? So we have a different scale. Right? So when we want to do a comparison later on, it will show some bias or to, towards the larger data. So it is the best practice to scale the data and make sure all the variable uh, measure in the same uh, unit of measurement right so second step is we need to calculate the covariance matrix find the eigenvalue and eigenvector and we need to find the principal component in the covariance matrix using uh, singular value decomposition and compare the variance for each pc in the data set the highest variance indicate the suitable pc to the to perform in the modeling Right. This is very simple techniques and easy to understand the data. So, first step, normalize the data. Right, normalize the data. It's necessary to normalize the data before performing PCA. Because uh, if the data has a different unit, measurement unit, it will provide, it will produce uh, some bias. Right, it will introduce some bias. So all variables have the same weight and PCA calculate relevant as this. So uh, PCA is sensitive to scale and uh, should be applied on data that have approximately the same scale of each variable. So if we cannot find variable that can uh, measure in the same unit, so we can convert it to uh, normal distribution by using Z-score. So Z score is X minus U divided by sigma. Right. So this is how we uh, convert. So if you look at the the first uh, graph here on the left hand side, this is example when the data is not measured in same unit. Right. So when you convert it to normal distribution, right, this is uh, equivalent to standard normal distribution. That's why when you convert this data, the variable to standard normal distribution, all the data will be uh, centered to mean equal to zero. Right? So that's why you will get a uh, data set that centered to mean equal to zero. Lah. <clears throat> so second step is to uh, calculate the covariant matrix 
right, and the data set. So this the aim is to understand how variable of the input data set are varying from the mean, right, with respect to each other. So how spread the data from the mean, right? So we need to find the covariance, the variable that are highly correlated, uh, that they contain redundant information. So can variance tell the data in the different orientation? No lah, right? Uh, so you need to right right so next step uh, next uh, we look at the us arrest data set so i think i already provide you the data in my website so you can download the data us arrest uh, this is contains 1000 uh, data set contain what arrest for one one hundred thousand accident uh, for assault, murder, and rape for each fifty US state. So we in this data set we have fifty observation lah, fifty state and four variable, uh, which is murder, assault, urban population, and rape. Okay. <clears throat> so first step we look at the data structure before we do any analysis. Let uh, please make sure you look at the data structure. So if you look at this one, uh, the assault value uh, contain the larger value in the data set in the in the whole variable. Right? Compared to the murder rate, we have 13.2, 10.0, 8.1, so on. So the mean for murder, mean for uh, assault, mean for urban is quite not in scale, not in the same direction. Right? Same way. So then we need to do normalization to make sure all the mean are centered to zero. Right? So we, we scale the data using uh, that score is that equal to uh, x minus mu divided by sigma square uh, sigma. Uh, this is a standard normal distribution uh, formula. So this is a box plot before uh, scaling. And this is a box plot after scaling, all the mean are centered to zero. Okay. So if you look at the data, the, the correlation of the data, so we can see that um, so there are strong correlation between assault and murder. Right, and weak correlation between murder and urban population means that urban population and murder have no or nearly no correlation right so moderate correlation between murder and rape murder and uh, sorry assault and rape right and so on uh. so since we have correlation between assault rape and murder right maybe you can expect at the initial stage uh, they, this variable will be grouped together and this variable urban population will be grouped on the separately right from this three variable right <clears throat> so when then we perform a principal component analysis for the four variables to explain the variance uh, vector in the data set without including the correlation between pc1 pc2 3 and 4 means that Within the PC, there will be a correlation. But between the PCs, there will be no correlation at all. Right. So now, we have four variables, there will be four PCs. So what, where, what PC to select? How many PC to select? So we need to depend on the value explain, the proportion of variance explain the eigenvalue. <coughs> so we have two, uh, two measurements to look at. The eigenvalue and the population uh, proportion of variance explained. So, this is same as the singular value, uh, singular di uh, uh, diagonal uh, metric, right? In singular value decomposition. So, the total of the cumulative uh, proportion of variance explained should be at least 80 percent, At least 80 percent, right? 
So if you this one it consists of sixty two point zero percent of the total variance in the data, and this consists twenty four point seven four percent of the total variance. So altogether will be eighty six percent. Right. So if you include all the PCs, it will be a hundred percent. There are no uh, dimensionality reduction. The, our objective is we want to reduce the dimensionality. So we will select the PC, the total PC, uh, the PC that consists total of uh, variant is still more than eighty percent, uh, more than or equal to eighty percent. So this is one criteria. So the second criteria or second way to choose how many PCs to select is based on the eigenvalue. So we look at the eigenvalue that more than one. If the eigenvalue less than one, will be not included into our selection. So we will remove the PC or principal component uh, that has uh, eigenvalue less than one. So we will consider all the PC that having eigenvalue more than one. In this case, we have PC1 and PC2. So we will conclude based on PC1 and PC2. Okay. So if you look at the the, the eigenvalue, we already conclude PC1 and PC2. So let's focus on PC1 and PC2. Right. So in PC1, we need to find the all the uh, the largest value, right? So we can compare by by row, right? If for the murder uh, row, we know that uh, the the largest value falls inside uh, PC one. For a salt row, the largest value is PC one. For urban population, the larger value is in PC two. Disregard the negative and positive signs, lah. Uh, in this case, we will uh, ignore the positive and negative sign first. We will look into the value. So for a rib, uh, row, the largest value is in uh, PC1. So we can conclude that uh, murder, assault, and rib falls inside PC1. And uh, for PC2, only consists urban population. And urban population also have uh, a bit of correlation with the murder, right? Uh, but very weak. So this is uh, how to interpret PC one represent general measure of violent crime rate, right? Because it consists murder, assault, and rape, right? The higher value of PC one indicate higher rate of murder, assault, and rape, right? For PC two. So it's associate it associate with the higher murder rate and urban population because uh, murder rate also high. <coughs> so PC three and PC four will be omit lah. Okay. Uh, eigen like eigen value. So eigen value. To, uh, so the value of proportion variance can be also calculated based on the eigen value. So to to find how many uh, variants explained in the uh, uh, first PC? We take this eigenvalue, uh, 2.530859 divided by the total of the eigenvalue. This is the same method as in, in the singular di uh, value decomposition. In fact, this is the diagonal uh, metric, right? So, this one I think I already calculated for you. 2.53 divided by 4.08. So the total of eigenvalue is 4.08. So you get 0 0.62. So it's also equal variance to the proportion variance. Right? Okay. Um, another method to determine how many PC to retain is by looking at the graph of proportion variance is claimed. And, and the cumulative proportion variance explained. We look at the elbow point. So we, we we look at the elbow point. This is the elbow point. You can see. So the point that uh, shows the highest. We look at the cumulative frequent uh, cumulative uh, proportion variance from PC one to PC two. It consists uh, higher. Uh, different, but 
but the the difference from PC2 to PC3 uh, is less uh, different, right? So see the smallest difference between PC2 and PC3. So that's why we will stop at PC2. PC1 and PC2 will be considered as our principal component. Right? We look at the elbow point. Eh? Okay. <coughs> so if you don't have the elbow point, it's okay, but uh, you can look at the eigenvalue and the proportion, uh, proportion of variance uh, explained. Right. So uh, then what we can do this point we represent the z value right we have already calculated based on the normalized uh, procedure then x minus mu divided by sigma right <laughs> so if you look at the the largest first component the first principal component the largest value right consists of the violent uh, crime rate right so the um, California, Nevada, and Florida uh, have a very high crime rate. Lah. Okay. But uh, for North Dakota, so it's going to have a uh, smaller crime rate because the, the value of principal component is very low. Right? So on, on the top, on the second principal component, the highest uh, variance Right, the highest value uh, will be urban population. Right, so the close one with the the close state with uh, urban value is California. Uh, has the highest score and uh, on the second component indicating the high level of urbanization, while opposite through a state uh, like Mississippi. Right, so now on uh, the state that in center means uh, consists of uh, zero crime and zero urbanization lah, because it, it stay at zero point so there are no uh, no crime maybe no uh, urbanization right so this is how you interpret the graph okay so this is example of the data to be plot, you can get it from Python, but basically this is a Z value. So summarize. So the PCA it's a statistical procedure that allow you to summarize the information content in the larger data, data table right, to a smaller set and the strength is easy to compute no, not uh, not very complicated speed up all the machine learning algorithm uh, by reducing the dimensionality right uh, and then the limitation is uh, it's very sensitive to outliers so then before we proceed with the principal component analysis we need to remove the outlier or rectify the outlier right so this is the limitation so if the data not follow multi-dimensional uh, normal distribution so it will not give the best principal component right so because we the first uh, step is we try to normalize the data by using normal standard normal distribution right so cannot fit the data is that the data not linear cannot be fit eh, into the model because uh, as the assumption of normal distribution data should be in linear okay uh, i think that's all uh, let me show you uh, maybe i start i put it up maybe i show you my the coding you can find my coding uh, on my website.
Uh, what can you see? Eh? Can you see my website? Yes. Okay. So this is um, the Python code. I, I, I just want to show you. Uh, this is the Python code for US arrest uh, in SBD. Right. So I'm applying the uh, US arrest data set. And performing CS, uh, CVD, uh, singular value decomposition. And uh, the same uh, result got, got uh, as compared to uh, principal component analytics, we still got two components. Right? So if you try to compress the image, right? I, I think I already provide the image, the letter image. So this is this is example of uh, performing singular value decomposition for image. So the objective is you want to reduce or compress the image. This is the image of five years old boy playing uh, baseball, right? So <clears throat> when I do analysis, uh, this is the elbow point, right? So image we have a uh, one thousand. Uh, how many? 1,024, 1,024 singular value right, uh, component. So the best one is like looking at the elbow point. So maybe around, this is the elbow point, right? Around uh, 10 to 20, I think. Uh, so I pick 20, top 20 singular value and then uh, we should uh, reconstruct again. So we will get this kind of a picture so this one this uh, picture on the right hand side already being uh, compressed from the original but if you look at this one the objective is we want to compress or reduce the dimension and preserve some element right so if you look at the right hand side you can see the head eye and bat still uh, can be detected lah, still uh, remain in the in the uh, picture right so the objective is you want to reduce the dimension or reduce the size of the picture uh, so i guess we need to say that the key element of this character like space baseball cat and general screens are still recognizable right so this is when you select uh, one principal component the picture will be very blur uh, five primitive uh, component 10 until 20. So when we select more singular value, they will more clearer towards uh, the original image. So the point is we want to remove or reduce the the the, the number of uh, variable, right? Uh, the dimension, but we want to we want to preserve the uh, you know, what we call the element in the original data set right so that is the point in dimensional reduction and we need to choose the singular variance explained more than 90 percent in this case when we say 20 to 20 singular value the percentage of variance explained is 99 percent right so that is for nvd and this is the python code for pca you can have a look this for this one i already uh perform uh, principal component uh, using Python uh, for UFARS data set. So I think I explained quite well in this uh, notes. You can refer step by step. Lah. So I already explain and show step by step to construct a principal component analysis. Okay. Uh, any question before we end the session? Remember, next week is your test. <laughs> Any questions so far? Hello? Do you have any question?
I think uh, if you don't have a question, then uh, that's all for today. Uh, see you next class.